Welcome to Kermit Uncut. I'm here with Kim Newman and we're on the set of Secrets of Cinema, which is a series that we've been making for BBC Four that goes out on July the 17th and then afterwards. Kim, you're the sort of chief writer on the project. What have we been trying to do? Ah, good question. What we've been trying to do is examine the specific genres of film. Romantic comedies, science fiction, horror films, heists and coming of age dramas. Everybody understands what those are as films. They're what do you want to go and see tonight? There's a heist movie on. We know exactly what that is. But maybe we don't. Maybe we need to take another look and get closer and see what the, the particular distinctive features of these film forms are. Why do we like them? How do they work? Your knowledge of film is encyclopedic. During the course of doing this, we've been looking at recurrent traits through you know, rom-coms and uh, coming-of-age movies mm -hmm. and so is there stuff that you've discovered that surprised you? Because I know that when you were doing one of the rights, you said I, that there were traits that had popped up that you hadn't really thought about before. The thing that really surprised me is the stuff in the, the horror show, which is, of course, the genre that collectively we know the most about. You've seen, And there are things about the way horror films work I had never noticed. Specifically the fact so many of them start with journeys. Yeah, yeah. And then it's one of those things, as soon as you notice it, then you realise that every single horror film you've seen starts with somebody in a coach or a carriage or a car <laughs> or a train or an aeroplane or a boat going somewhere. One of the points about analysing or discussing genre cinema is that we take it for granted. Yeah. So we don't often think about how the stories work. Romantic comedy, rom-com, is an interesting one. Of the, the genres we've picked, it's the most rigid in narrative terms in that if you change even one minor element then you've got a farce or yeah. a, a sex comedy. It's not a romantic comedy if, I mean, we argue a bit about whether it's or it can possibly be a romantic comedy if they don't stay together at the end. Yeah. And there are one or two examples, La La Land recently, where they, at the end they're not together, or Annie Hall, but then you, you pull back from those, you think, are they really romantic comedies? Yeah. Uh, but also it's interesting because you were looking at The Fly and saying, well, The Fly is a rom-com, yes. it's just it happens to be rather than boy meets girl, it's boy meets girl and gets involved in teleport and mishap yes, and girl absolutely. ends up shooting boy in the head. Yeah. So it's to do with the way in which those things yeah. uh, intertwine. One of the other things in the rom-com programme was that you brought up the subject of the truth about cats and dogs, which I had completely forgotten yeah. about, but it's actually a really yeah. good little comedy. No, it's one of my top ten rom-coms, actually. The thing about rom-coms, we noticed, it's one of the few genres where you think of the writer before you think of the director. Yeah. Isn't it? it's, and it's, one, it's interesting that quite often writers of rom-coms then become directors of rom-coms on the assumption that <laughs> once the script is locked and perfect and you've cast two utterly charming people, then basically you just turn up and point the camera, don't you? One of the other things is that we've tried to get in films that not necessarily are our favourite films, but films mm. that work within the conventions, but because I was involved, there'll be some films that will, like Punch Drunk Love and The Exorcist, they will be in there because I'm involved. What are the things that, that you couldn't have done without? There are a few things I'm really glad to see spotlighted. Truth About Cats and Dogs is, is one, actually. but. No, for me, the point of putting these things together, it reminded me a bit of, of, sort of those kind of mosaic or mashup type films you see, where somebody takes shots from dozens of film noirs and stitch them together yeah. into kind of uber film noir. And I was sort of trying more of that. It's like sometimes, you know, the trick was to remember which particular scene in which film illustrated no, most properly. Well, one of the great pleasures of this for me, Kim, has been working with you. As you know, I'm a huge fan, and uh, so thank you so much. And well, it's been uh, a great team with this project, <laughs> and uh, have put up with umpteen different drafts and, re and put up with and us and us, yeah, and and the kind of know-it-all obnoxiousness, which is uh, the the hallmark, I think, you'll find of our approach to, to cinema. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, know-it-all obnoxiousness, starting on BBC Four, July the seventeenth. Please tune in.